your advice then on a really safe management plan? So my advice would be hypermobile dancers require a slower paced training in order to build that safe, stable alignment. So it's that progressive building on their skills rather than rushing through to attain these extremes of range of motion that they can't control. Stability and strength in the trunk, providing a stable base for the movement of the limbs. Working for dynamic flexibility because they already possess static flexibility. They can already take their joints to these ranges of motion, but can they control it once it gets there or can they actually get it there with muscle activity. I think also we should be focused on very specific joint stability and muscle strength to protect that hypermobile joint. So if it's the hip, they need to be doing very focused specific hip work in all directions, flexion, extension, abduction, adduction, internal and external rotation. So very specifically selected exercises for that joint. And then, of course, trying to reinforce good proprioception and motor control. Put everything together for motor control. So they need time, they need focus, and they need a graded exposure working into the hypermobile range safely. So we don't ask them, lose your hypermobility, give it away, please don't train up there. No, train progressively and safely so that that extreme of range of motion can look great and be safe. So we're not asking the students not to stretch at all, but as I see it, it's often mismanaged and not understood. So what is your expert advice on the topical subject of stretching? My initial advice is most hypermobile students don't need to stretch. Having said that, they don't need to stretch any further into their hypermobile range. They may need to stretch specifically in areas of flexibility deficit. We might see the student with a hypermobile hip and knee hyperextension who has a very tight calf, for example, or a tight ankle. So any stretching that's going to be done should be done quite judiciously in areas of deficit. Stretches themselves should be used appropriately. So dynamic stretches at the beginning of class, gradual, through range, dynamic stretching. At the beginning of class as well, you can use the contract relax type PNF stretch that dancers have become familiar with. Towards the middle, half to three quarters of class, you can perhaps start bringing in the ballistic style stretching in preparation for jeté. And then towards the end is when the static stretches will best do their job to improve your, your ongoing flexibility. So if you're going to be stretching, just choose your stretches appropriately. I think dancers do need, even hypermobile dancers, do need ballistic stretches or control of their ballistic movements. They have to be able to perform these movements in their choreography. But uh, I would say they don't need to do the unnecessary end range stretching. So really summing up, less is more. And we do take this advice seriously in the PBT program and really take care of the individual. And uh, I'm encouraging everyone to listen to Deborah's wonderful advice. So thank you for this enlightening conversation regarding hypermobility. And always remember, the body is forever. My name is Kate Stample, I'm 26, I'm from the UK and I'm a dancer and I'm a dance teacher. Um, as you may see, I'm a wheelchair user so I am a disabled dancer and dance teacher which you don't come across very often but um, it's my passion and what I love to do so I'm very grateful to be able to do it. I have a condition called Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. Now Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome is a genetic disorder. It is basically where your collagen is too stretchy, so it's an extreme form of hypermobility. Now, hypermobility is really, really common in dancers, and that's why we're here to talk to you about it today. I was training to be a professional um, ballet dancer, 
and when I was 14 I suddenly became really unwell. I was first diagnosed with ME um, and ME made me extremely tired and fatigued and um, I had a lot of pain and I became so poorly that at one point I was paralysed. And then a few years later, I got diagnosed with Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, which, as I say, is a genetic disorder which affects the whole of my body, both externally and internally. Now, um, I, have, I still have about uh, 12 plus dislocations a day. I work very, very hard to manage these, so to manage my muscles and to build um, my muscle around it to keep my ligaments in place. But internally, things like... Um, you know, my digestive system doesn't work very well. I've recently had some bad prolapses um, and it's it's a really difficult condition to manage, I'll be honest. And um, it's really important that if you see a student early on that you're able to manage this condition and spot this condition. So, as I say, um, dancers with hypermobility, you will come across them a lot and you have to be so, so careful with dancers with hypermobility. It's really important not to overstretch them. It's really important that you know what to look out for in a dancer with hypermobility, but also how to teach, how to train, how to nurture, and really how to just be careful with dancers with hypermobility. If you see a dancer with extreme hypermobility, so somebody with extreme hypermobility usually has um, the Baton score of around seven, eight, nine plus, and they'll have other um, complications. So they might start getting tired all the time. They might start having the pain, stuff like that. You really need to make sure that um, they're getting assessed by a doctor and things like that. And that's when um, I got my EDS diagnosis. And that is where the correct treatment is so incredibly important. So if I overstretched myself now, I would dislocate my joints and you can imagine if you dislocate your joints it is something that could completely put me out for the rest of my life it's as simple as that and I didn't know this when I was younger so when I was younger I was stretched <laughs> being a pro training to be professional I was stretched I was stretching myself every day to make myself as flexible as possible and quite frankly I probably wasn't doing the safe training I should be so my message to you is to make sure that you're looking after your students. You know your students inside out. You know if they're um, hypermobile, if they're changing, if they're becoming um, more hypermobile, if they're becoming tired and getting more pain. But also if you've got students who do come to you with something like Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome or a different disability and you know how to teach them and how to adapt. Because if they do come to you, with something like that you shouldn't have to be scared of training them um, and that's really important in my practice and um, the main thing is is that you know how to do it safely so please please get in touch and um, we'll help guide you through it thank you so much